what's going on guys it's your boy Siso here bring guys yet another video here today bring guys a cool little video how to make your own simplistic logo animation reveal um basically it's kind of like the same thing i did last week last week i actually did a video on like how to actually make your ma mascot text and in that video in the beginning of the video i did a cool little simple little logo animation reveal thing which is actually pretty cool because one if you wanted to do something maybe you do steep uh speed or something like that maybe you want to like you know if you do logo speed ups or whatever if you want to reveal that project or whatever in a really cool, simple way, um, you can do something like I'm going to be showing you guys today. Or I, I hopefully I did, uh, hopefully did something as well in the beginning of this video. So you can actually see what it looks like and all that cool stuff. But it, it does a lot of cool things. You can If you're, you know, you're a logo designer and you want to actually go ahead and post it on Twitter, it's a really cool way you can like upload a gift of like the logo kind of like you know zooming in or whatever, or a cool little reveal animation, and then it'll just keep looping itself. It's just a really fun way to, and attractive way to see you know, maybe like your logo design. Or if you want to actually you know up your presentation, value within your portfolios that's a really really solid way of doing it as well so uh you right out the bat i am still sick as you can tell like it's it got really bad last week but i actually can now sort of retain my voice and i'm, I'm trying my hardest I'm, i didn't want to miss a video bros all right so basically for this video here today i'm going to be using a mascot design that i've sold to a company known as roman services and that's basically what this logo is right here it's a pre-made that i made and they bought it of course and basically i'm going to use this for the actual tutorial here today so basically if you have a logo that is a mascot design and you have a logo that has both you know a mascot design and then you know a stroke in the background it's basically gonna be helpful because that's gonna what i'm gonna be like uh, how do you guys say like my setting for the actual tutorial here today? So basically if you don't have one um, That's fine. You can either if you even have a symbol you want to put a stroke on it That's fine. If not, you just gotta basically skip the last part of the video But if you do make sure you actually save two different uh, different pictures basically one without the stroke for your mascot design or one with the stroke and the picture or just the stroke itself um, Like this so basically want to save one like this a picture like this and then a picture like this, right? All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing going and let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, let's get this thing going. So I'm basically like dragging these two things here, basically the two pictures that I just talked about. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and go ahead and drag those in there in the project. And just so you know, really quickly, the new composition right here, it's basically 1920 by 1080, 60 frames per second. And that's pretty much what I did for the new composition. That's where we're at right now. First thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is actually make a new solid. And before I do that, I'm going to quickly throw in my logo here so I can actually take a color from it. Throw in my solid here, new solid. And I'm going to drag this. And I'm going to use this same exact, uh, I think I'm going to use this orange. Press OK. And I'm going to use this orange for my background solid. And that's just a nice little background color for me to use. And, you know, once you're good, you're pretty much now good to go ahead and just drag in your actual logo design. Now, like I said before, if you don't have a stroke for one, that's perfectly fine. It's still going to look cool, whatever. But so I'm gonna I have two separate ones. One with that's that says R2, which this is the stroke, and the one that says R1, which is basically just the logo itself. So I'm gonna throw in just the logo itself or whatever logo you guys have, and I'm gonna pretty quickly press S on my keyboard on that same logo uh, layer, and then just change my scale. It's gonna of course if you press S on your keyboard, it brings you to the scale tool, and I'm gonna quickly just go ahead and throw that scale down about 25, and I would say that's a pretty good scale size for what I want for the actual composition. Now really quickly as well. Um, <clears throat> Just for like future references if you guys want to select your actual logo just by like simply clicking on it right clicking on it transform and then make sure it's in the center make sure you press center in view just like so most of the times it's going to always be in the center however if it's not there's your little quick little uh tool to actually fix it for you now the first thing i want to do is actually do this cool little uh kind of transparent or cut out fly in version that we kind of kind of like bites off from my low our enter design so i'm gonna quickly go ahead and do that right now so what you're gonna have to do is of course you're gonna actually have have to have two layers of your logo design uh in your composition here so what i'm gonna do is a really quickly first make a new solid this time i'm gonna make my solid a nice little maybe like a dark dark blue let me see if this one looks good uh That'll do for now. That's fine. It's not the best blue in the universe. It doesn't even really look blue. However, it's it works. Whatever color you want to have your solid. I kind of want to have like a black that's not really black. That's what I'm kind of going for here. Um. So yeah, once you have this solid, you can throw in your second copy of your logo design right above that. Because what we're going to do with this copy, and right before I do that, let's make sure we lower the scale down in the copy as well. That matches the same exact as the R1. So basically with this, what we're going to do is we're going to end up going ahead and actually cutting it out. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to toggle switches and nodes, or I said nodes, modes, just like so. 
toggle switch in, uh, in modes, and you're gonna see yourself uh, see these little options here that you're gonna want to have the one that has track mat right here. And with that, you're gonna just go to your solid here, go to where it says none under track mat, and go to where it says alpha inverted mat R1. It's gonna basically uh, cut out whatever's on top of it, which is the logo that we put on top of it. Once you select it, <clears throat> let's get rid of this first logo we did. You're gonna see it's a basic cutout of the actual uh, layer right above it. So if I just move this up and down, you can see it's a, it's a full cutout and it looks really cool and it's gonna be a really cool asset actually to what we're gonna be doing right now. So really quickly, I'm gonna go ahead and I already have it set for myself. So I'm, on, I'm at one second right now, right here in my timeline. I just kind of like zoomed in a little bit. So you can see it says one second, one second, you know, 30, whatever. I was gonna zoom in a little bit. So I'm perfect at one second it's in the middle of my my little my little settings here. So once you have this, this is where you want to actually keep it because I kind of wanted to take one second for this entire animation to kind of be finished. It's just a nice little you know kind of thing. If you want it longer, you want it longer. That's fine. It's whatever. It also depends on like a lot. So right now I'm just gonna be using one second as my final uh, transition time, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the scale here. I'm gonna click on this little uh, clock here where it says scale, and this will give me the keyframe option, right? So it's gonna put a keyframe right at one second, which is perfect, because at 25, we wanna make sure that everything stops at this perfect 25% uh, scale. So I'm gonna go always to the beginning of our timeline, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, basically up my scale to, it, to where it's just basically out of the view. Right where it's out, right here, perfect. It's gonna make another keyframe for myself. So what I'm gonna see is what you're gonna see is if you just kind of scroll through here, you're gonna see the actual cutout. Looks like it's coming in, and this is pretty much one of the main portions of the actual little animation thing here. So a really cool thing is if I just show you guys really quickly. By the way, if you're gonna render the render the preview out, and for some reason it takes a little longer than you would like it to, just drop down your preview to about half, and it should be like half the speed to actually render it out, just in case your computer's not the greatest in the world. Um, so yeah, uh, you can see it looks kind of boring because it's a very it's a very stagnant kind of uh, you know motion. So we can actually make that look a little cooler. So if you just take your mouse and drag over these two points, right click on one of the points and go to Keyframe Assistant, then go to Easy Ease. You're going to see these little things turn into like almost hourglass shapes. So if you go over here where it says Graph Editor, click that. You get this little graph where it's basically like a nice little U here. So basically, this is what you're seeing when you're actually going through the actual animation. You're seeing yourself go like, it goes like a little slow, a little fast, and a little slow. Just a very simple stagnant motion. So if you guys want to, you can click on the points, and you can take it and drag it inward. And basically what you're going to see is you'll see it just basically comes in a little fast and then goes a little more slower. So basically this line is gonna dictate what's kind of happening to the speed of the transition. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this in. Basically I'm just gonna take both of them and move them both in. And you're gonna see the motion's gonna look a little more fluid and a little like just a little more sexier. I don't know, that's just what's what I'm going for here. It looks really nice now. It's a very simple, clean animation now still. And pretty much now you're you're almost done actually, believe it or not. You're gonna wanna take the first R1 logo that we actually did and we're just gonna bring this above all of that stuff that we just did. Just like so, and that's perfectly fine. Now, for me, since I actually have a, a background that's not like the most unskewer color, the actual outline is like a little awkward, so I'm gonna quickly change my color to basically, not a shape layer, change my solid layer to maybe like a darker color of like this. Let's see what this looks like. Let's see. I mean, it's not too noticeable, but as you can see, let's see what the actual beginning looks like now. That's eh, not bad. Why not? We'll, we'll keep it like that for now. Um, sure, we're just gonna use that as our as our background layer now, not the orange. So basically, you're gonna see this here. So what you wanna do, of course, is we have this little simple animation here now done. What we're gonna wanna do now is actually select for the actual, this logo right here, the actual first duplicate that we had. Uh, we're gonna wanna select a cool little transition for it. Now, these are, you can just go through a lot. You can figure out even more cooler transitions, but I'm going for the, like, the, the real basic right now. And I'm gonna use, like, CC Jaws. It's a pretty cool one. It also has, uh, in my shapes layer here, it has a Robo Jaw, which kind of goes with the Robo Roman theme that I have going on here. So that's what I'm gonna be using. So if you wanna, like, you know, figure out which ones look cooler, if you just go where it says completion here and kind of, like, move through it, you can kind of see what the animation looks like. And if you don't like it, go right back into edit, or excuse me, effects, transitions, pick which one you feel like looks the most coolest. But as I'm gonna use for the actual video here, it's gonna be this one right here. 
So I'm gonna go back to my little one second frame, right, right here. I'm gonna make sure I go to my completion. I'm gonna make sure that is at zero because that's gonna mean it's basically complete. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I keyframe that. Now, if you guys want to, you can bring up your keyframes just by pressing U on your keyboard. And when you select the layer, if you, do, if you can't see the keyframes, just press U, they'll pop up, it'll bring you right to them. Just like, the, uh, just like so, you can see now I have the completion keyframe right here. Now, what you wanna do now, is I'm gonna go to maybe around here is where I want the animation to start. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take my keyframe, or excuse me, take my mouse, drag it where it says 0%, move it, and of course, just make it 100%. And then you're going to see that the animation will basically start. It starts a little late, so I'm going to actually move my keyframe a little farther to the left. So it actually can start a little sooner than, there we go, that's perfect. And you can kind of see it just doing something like that. And that's, it looks pretty freaking awesome to me. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and put an easy ease on it. Dude, My I know my voice is like killer right now. I know like some of you guys are absolutely tilted. I'm just like... I apologize. I'm like hearing myself talk. It's just like, bro, shut the. No, I'm just kidding. Um, here we go. That's not bad whatsoever. Looks pretty freaking awesome, in my opinion. So yeah, that's a very simple animation here. So pretty much to complete this thing going on here is I'm gonna go ahead and drag in, in my projects, drag in my stroke, throw it in between these two things here, change my size or my excuse me, my scale, to 25. And basically, I'm going to do the same thing for R2 here, which is basically my stroke layer right behind everything. And the reason why I put it in between R1 picture, like duplicate that we did for the actual first transition, and this one is because if I put it below it, of course, you won't be able to actually see the stroke because there's a solid behind it. And if I put it above it, then of course, you're going to actually see, no longer see the first uh, logo. So that's why I chose two different pictures. That way, it doesn't have to really interfere with each other. And so I'm back at one frame per second, excuse me, one second here. So R2 affects transitions. I'm going to use basically a simple little linear wipe. Where is that? Linear wipe. So if you guys want to see what linear wipe does, it's a basically a simple line wipe sweep, just like so. I'm going to change my angle to it just like a little bit. So you can see it's going to come in from the top right, right? It looks pretty cool. So after one second, I'm actually going to keyframe the completion at 100% because that means there's nothing's being shown right now. And that's at one second. I want to do this after the full animation stops, then I want my uh, <clears throat> stroke to come in and sweep. So that's where I'm gonna have my keyframe, right at number one at 100%. And then I'm gonna move just a little bit above. Let's go to like half a second after one second, or even like a 20th, like a 20, 20 milliseconds after one second. And then I'm gonna put my animation to zero. And then you're gonna see that once one second hits, it's not, or excuse me, once this entire thing goes, right? After this animation stops, then this thing sweeps in and it looks pretty cool. So if I want to see my little transition uh, completion linear wipe keyframes, just press U on your keyboard and then you can see them just right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and quickly render this out. <clears throat> and you can see it looks pretty freaking badass, right? It's a very simple little logo reveal animation. And if you just like, of course, if you chose a different composition size, maybe something that's more like, you know, maybe it doesn't have to be 1920 by 1080. It can be something little like a nice little square for like, like I said, for presentation purposes. And really, this is basically the animation finished. Whatever you want to do now is like up to you. If you guys want to easy ease this linear sweep, you guys can. Why the hell not? Let's just go ahead and do that right now. It's a really quick, simple process, right? I'll just do, do that just like so. Right, and then we're just gonna go ahead and let that do its thing. I mean, it's way too fast, so I'm gonna actually have to fix that. But basically, you're you're literally done. So once you're you're done with this, it all depends on what you want to do next. And honestly, whatever's next is just maybe like some kind of text or something like that, or just something that just looks cool. And overall, it's a very simple process, but it's a very effective one as well. It's a little, it's it just catches people's eyes. And hopefully you guys enjoyed today's tutorial. It's a very simple one, yes. And I hope you just, you know, maybe utilize it for like stuff like your portfolio and stuff. So yes, I am done for today. I need to stop talking, bros. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a like, 200 like, oh my God, 200 likes on the video equals a secret download below. I'm um, mostly gonna give you a, a cool little, I guess it's, you can call it a template or a mock-up of some sort where you can basically like use this. I'll probably just give you guys this animation, a uh, little After Effects project, you know, file here that you can use and kind of like figure it out yourselves if you guys wish to figure out if you're those kind of people like myself um so yeah thank you guys so much please leave a comment 
uh, down, like whatever tutorial you guys want to see me do. Of course, follow me on Twitter at SissoHQ. Please go ahead and check out my Selfie, Selfie.com uh, slash SissoHQ for any pre mades and packs as well as three bucks. And yes, I'm done talking. I will talk to you guys next week. Peace.